What else do we got? We got Purging Wand. That would be something if it could delete the whole game from your computer. Okay. Mm, kick. If you fail, you have to wait for the download. <laughs> that would be pretty ruthless. A soldier rests between two fallen columns, emanating a faint odor of seaweed and timber. By the drop the glass. You'll vi you emerge on the prow of a fine ship. Your armor pulses with enchantment, dominating those who draw near. Your flag flies for Bracchus Rex, a tyrant who traded for your soul. With his power, your flesh and blood is no longer relevant. The vision fades as the soul thrashes, trying to sever your connection. Uh, light is where the soul belongs. Heard to it there. Be soulless is a horrible, empty fate. You seek out Bracchus's vault, but the moment you reach the soul jar, he ensnares you. Thus imprisoned, you can only dream about what is out of reach. Your soul, and that the vision shatters as the soul squirms away from you, curling up in the bottom of the jar. The soul jar pulses with trapped life force. Uh, the old PS2 games did almost uh, almost that. Uh, some games would... Uh, some games would put the memory delete screen on, but it was just a scare. <laughs> uh, store my backpack. The jar before you may have looked opulent once, but no longer. Now it's covered in grime, its paint chipped away, and its jewels long stolen. The soul jar rocks slightly, light flashing from underneath its lid. On its rim, you can just barely make out the name Gratiana. As soon as you touch the jar's cracked surface, you see a vision of splendor, silks, fine food, and decadent lechery. But underneath it all lies bone and blood. The vision shifts. You see burning villages, slaughtered women and children. You see her, purging wand in hand, standing amongst it all. She throws her head back and laughter echoes in your skull. A shadow falls across her and you see a large, weeping face. She reaches out as if to comfort, but Bracchus drags her back. You see her fall into the mire of the swamp, trapped. As you pull your hand away, you can feel a deep longing sadness in your soul. Is it regret or just sadness for a life that used to be? Gratiana's soul flits through the air, eyes wild and desperate. She turns to you as her spirit starts to fade from this world. Freedom! But I, I'm not ready! No, you can't! No! The terrible vision fades. Uh, did I screw that up? <clears throat> Gratinia used the pain and deaths of others for her pleasure. She should be damned until the end of time. While she lived a selfish life, she seems to have repented. She should be forgiven. Whatever a person may have done in life, they can always be redeemed. Her life was marred by debauchery, greed, and violence. No last-minute conversion should excuse that. Narrator is the best character in this game. Such an amazing voice. I know, right? This jar glitters and glitters. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of the room, joking us all around raw with laughter. All bar the zombies, who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens, and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She's flanked by heavily armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word, and the undead lurch towards the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracchus Rex and his whore. Even when she's thrown inside and the door sealed, you can still hear her shouts. 
You pull your hand away from the jar, your head swimming. You can feel the dwarf's cold terror still twisting in your gut. For just a moment, Source swirls around you, and then, with a whisper, it cascades into your body. You feel light as the power of the universe fills your being. You feel your spirit jolt, and for a heartbeat, you're looking through other eyes. You see a dungeon and a table shared with two other skeletons before you collapse. When you open your eyes, you're back in your old body, senses buzzing with... The vision fades. I can do a little uh, uh, condemn them. I've rarely seen such cowardice on display. Keeping the dead as slaves. What a disgusting display. She deserves every punishment she got. She might seem a little rough, but her heart was clearly in the right place. I'll take that. The jar on the plinth before you seems ancient but is in surprisingly good condition. It's covered in pictograms that you can't understand, but you're sure you just saw one of them move. The pictograms spin to life, and you're dragged into a dream. You see the lizards of the ancient empire turning their backs on you, casting you out into the wilderness. As you roam, the human apes turn away from you, all but one. One smiles, one opens his arms, one says he'll take you home. Bracchus Rex. He promises power for a price. He picks off your golden scales one by one, stripping you down to the bone. He promised you a crown, but all you got were shackles. I I freed him. I free I freed uh, I freed him. You try to fight, try to reclaim what's yours, but a woman takes you by the hand and leads you to a tower. He promised he'd take me home, you cry. You are home, she smiles as she seals the door. This is where you... Your hand drops away from the soul jar, your skin prickling. In the back of your mind, you hear a small, scared voice whimper before fading to nothing. You see a shape emerge from the ruins of the broken jar, a lizard in the finest necromancer robes. It grudgingly nods at you as it starts to fade from the mortal realm. Farewell to flesh. Farewell to both. The long dead lizard's Farewell. visions fade. Many describes that, uh, uh, such selfishness, such unneeded pain, disgusting. This is the price of pride and greed. The villain got what he deserved. No amount of loneliness excuses wickedness. He helped a monster for selfish reasons. In the end, he was brave enough to fight Brackers. I okay. Um The soul jar pulses with trapped life as the soul spit shaking fingers fold into a crude what remains of the that snake worm <laughs> I won't lie, I'm probably doing all this poorly. Look at that want. It hums within a source. The soul jar stands on its plinth, glowing softly. From within, you can almost hear the whisper of a voice. The other characters have good commentary for what is happening in the game? Yeah, I agree. You see, or rather, you feel a far-off land. Frozen breath hangs in the air. Pine needles brush your cheeks. And in your arms, you can feel a weight. A body, dead. But you have hope. Your vision swims. You're older. But perhaps not wiser. You march at the head of a shambling host, the enemies of Bracchus Rex melting before you. The scene twists again. Now Bracchus stands before you, a beautiful woman at his side. 
You lash out in treasonous rage, but cold arms bind you. You're sealed away in a tower. Your screams fill the darkness. You feel a jolt and open your eyes to see the soul jar before you, lying still in the vault. Your hand falls from the jar and... Oh, oh whoops. Uh, anyways, out of the game story is a bit vanilla, but the characters are fun and compelling. The necromancer's memories fade to black, but the feelings remain. The memories of a necromancer. What could be more vile? Anyone who marches at the head of an undead host deserves whatever punishment they get. It takes bravery to try and strike down an evil king. Perhaps especially one you once supported. Oh, okay. Um... The jar stands before you, cold, and a human spirit slips from the ruins of the oh, jar. Oh, I didn't mean it. My eternal thanks, young one. Oh, time you deaf. Oh, well. I didn't actually mean to do that, but I did it. I did it. Whoops. Ha, 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 ha. Hmm. The deity's head and hands are missing, severed as if by a sword. You can't tell if this was meant to be symbolic somehow, or a mere act of vandalism. Well, something strange. As you take in its chiseled details, you have a vision. The statue comes to life and embraces you awkwardly with its broken arms. Un that shrine seems to have brought me here. What is this place? Seeing spirits, a higher power has temporarily granted you the ability to see spirits. As you learn to channel more source, you may one day be able to use this power abil uh, powerful ability at will. You needed those for another quest, so you didn't break anything, but basically did just uh, did just a shortcut. Uh... Okay. The game is uh, the game is free. Uh, the game is quite free, so you can't really mess anything up. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. The haunted figure before you slowly turns to face you. He raises his weapon, a great ethereal sword, and rushes forward, ready to strike you. Yeah, hold up hands and shout for the figure to stop. You are not its enemy. The figure plants a foot before you, raises his sword, and commands, Fight! Uh, raise your weapon, prepare to sidestep as his attack... Uh, as his attack and strike the back. The figure charges you head on, ready to plunge the sword into your chest. As he charges, he suddenly evaporates into the ether, passing through your body. Deep, dark cold blooms in every particle of your body. The figure materializes behind you and grabs your head with one hand, pressing his sword to your throat with the other. If you so much as breathe too suddenly, it will slice your jugular with ease. You... You are my champion? How I wasted my efforts saving you as the ship went down. Uh, remain calm. Tell him you have no idea what he means. The divine is dead. Void woke and haunt the night. Do you think I would let my people, our people, suffer so deeply without intervening? I chose you to be my champion, but it seems I've chosen wrong. Yeah, swing your head back, slicing your neck along his blade. He staggers back, holding his nose. The wound on your neck quickly knits together. He smiles. You may do well after all. Hmm. Uh, the, t uh, the time for mystery is over. What are you talking about? Recognize me. You are my champion. And I am your god. He lifts his visor. Two deep green eyes fix you in their stare. In an instant, you know you are speaking to Ralik. 
god of all humans. Why'd you bring me here? You've brought yourself. This gives me hope. I see a spark in you. The beginnings of a fire that may blaze our path back to preeminence in Rivalon. This is why I've chosen you. To lead humankind back toward divinity. This is why you are my selected. My God Woken. God Woken. Let me show you. A great surge of power arrests your heart, your mind. When it passes, you feel ecstatic, replete. Oh. What sort of power is this? You may have noticed I've tried to help you on your journey. I blessed the water beneath your feet so that it would aid you. Now you have the power for yourself. And this is only the beginning. More and greater powers await you, if only you will seek them. Only one like you can wield them. One marked for greatness. One who can either rise to this great task or let his people fall to ruin. Well, what do you want to do? Your purpose will be great, but the first step is simple. Escape the grasp of those who would do you harm. You and you alone must safely leave this place. You and you alone must rise above the reach of minor people. So you, have, uh, you made friends here, you care for them, and would see them safety, uh, safely out of harm's reach too. Radic visibly bristles at the mention of your companions. I am not the only of the seven seeking a champion, my child. Your friends may have been similarly summoned by powers that threaten the very existence of our race. He casts his gaze over the war below, where God fights God in a relentless, bloodless battle. Times have changed. The gods are at war. The victor will choose the terms of peace. If we fail, if you fail, our race may well be lost. A father knows when he may trust in his children, and when he must intervene. I know that you will succeed if you choose it. Do not disappoint me. <laughs> you hear a sharp chittering from the ground. It seems your squirrel friend is having an argument with his cat. After a quick back and forth, the squirrel throws up its paws and reaches out to touch your foot. You feel a strange new power fill your body. The squirrel sits back, sulking, and the cat struts away, cheerful. Sibyl is pensively tracing a new name on her arm. Gilded letters in an ancient alphabet. Uh, what are the letters says? My own name. A little gift from Tyrs and Dilius. <laughs> Leave it to a god to be overly dramatic. I don't. Uh, red does, and I'm probably going to end up getting it at some point, because I completely forgot about that talent. Uh, why? Ask why you write your own name. Must be a celestial party game, or maybe he wanted to teach me a lesson. If the latter, he has much to learn. I'd say we should stop to talk, but I'm swamped. <laughs> It's still there, Quercus. Do you? Uh, should, uh, should get it for my main. There's many fun interactions. Yeah, we'll definitely will. Okay. But what does supernova do? Uh, explode, creating surface fires and dealing in a large area around you, except areas blocked by obstacles.
Oh, wow. We'll definitely send that to red. Damn. Oh, I need to get you a necklace at some point. Both of these two characters are actually missing a necklace. That's okay. Los. Los. I think that's good for now. We also send a Los. I never, apparently I never, uh, looted his body. Oh, absolutely nothing. Okay, so there's still this whole area to essentially uh, look for. Isn't there a way to cure these guys, or do I just gotta straight up fight them? Also, how much more until I get until I level up? Oh, quite a bit. Pig is engulfed in flames, but her skin remains unsinged. Especially shocked, these are not ordinary flames. These pigs are engulfed by necrofire. It is a hellish curse. Please release us. Ask how she can curse. Well, I'll tell you, I have a spell that might uh, ease her suffering, but first, she and her friends will need to calm down. Are you sure it will work? How do I know it won't make this even worse? And then it says that she has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Panicking helps no one. Okay, but I don't think... Ooh, uh, say so she's not alone in her suffering. Many others with have withstood torture at the hands of tyrants. How'd you become a curse? It is the doing of Rakas Rex. Kings will always come to see themselves as gods. I should never have spoken ill of him. Many ages ago, we dared warn of Rakas Rex's gluttonous cruelties. We paid the price with these poor kind bodies and the curse of eternal flames. All right, and oh. the price means nothing. I would reject it if it meant a chance to turn back the clock and worship Bracus Rex as he demanded. Bring it to an end. I will trust you with this. B -b please. Oh, how do you do that?
Okay, so that means we won't end up having to fight them. Good. Now we also learned the bless skill. Menacing skeletal guardian looks at you wearily, then yawns. So you dare defy the will of Blackers Rex, prepare to die, and so on and so forth. I demand to be told what house this man dead lives law? belongs to. But I obey our laws no longer. Their authority. I hope this brings the discussion to an end. I don't like being roused from slumber only to be greeted by such banality. Ask why he must be punished. It is not my place to question Bracus Rex's will. I am to execute those who defy his legacy. Besides, there are far worse fates Bracus Rex could have visited upon you. This island itself is proof enough of that, I dare say. Ah, uh, Braxis is dead. She moans impatiently and taps her bony foot. Yes, yes, I know he's dead. I am still obligated to perform his wishes. He may not live, but the threat of his curse hangs over me. Ah, uh, there is no curse that uh, could know if she let you be. Huh. It is as you say. In any case, no curse could possibly be worse than this droning drivel. Be on your... The Guardian chokes on her words, as if strangled by an invisible hand. <laughs> That works. My, oh my. Oh. Yoink. Oh, this requires strength, though. So. Ah, uh, this will. Ah, uh, this is. Is there... Oh, yep, there's one more right up here. Wait. Hold on. Um, okay, there's another one right here. You didn't get the blessed skill, did you? Oh, you did, because you're human. There's one more by the looks of it. 